TPP talks reach critical points at APEC summit. Myanmar sentences Malaysian and Singaporean reporters to jail for flying drone. Thanks for choosing the evening edition of News on 2. You're with me, Renee Loretta Fong. U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from a far-reaching Pacific Rim trade pact has scarcely dented the push for freer trade in the region, judging from the frenetic growth of exports of clothing, phones and computers from Vietnam. The booming nation of 95 million people is thriving from surging trade and investment, even without the advantage its exports might have gained from the U.S.'s participation in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. The changes are evident in Da Nang, a former battlefield transformed into a tourism and investment hub that is host to this week's annual summit of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC Forum. Leaders of the 11 remaining TPP members, representing roughly 13.5% of the global economy, are due to meet on the sidelines of the APEC summit, seeking an agreement in principle that, unlike the original accord, would not require U.S. involvement. Meanwhile, a 16-member region wide pact that encompasses China and India, but also does not include the U.S., the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, is also under negotiation. Vietnam's export sector has blossomed as Chinese and other manufacturers of T-shirts, pants and other inexpensive clothing and shoes moved their factories to Southeast Asia to take advantage of the region's lower wages and anticipated tariff cuts under the TPP. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Razak kicked off his participation at the APEC Leaders' Summit today by spending about one hour fielding questions from CNBC anchor Nancy Hungerford, sharing the stage with Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill at the APEC CEO Summit this morning. Dato Sri Najib, among others, answered questions relating to the TPP agreement. Dato Sri Najib said he was confident the TPP agreements can go through without the U.S., adding that all 11 members' countries can conclude the trade pact during the two-day summit. I'm reasonably confident. I'm uh, quite sanguine that we will, we will get a deal. Uh, but of course, there's what to go through. The uh, process of uh, ratification and some sign letters and all that kind of thing. Dato Sri Najib added that he believed the TPPA was the best way to generate wealth and create a win-win position for everybody. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Najib met with New Zealand's newly elected Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern on the sidelines of the 25th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting, AELM. Dato Sri Najib and Ardern, who is New Zealand's 40th Prime Minister, discussed matters from the digital economy to regional security for almost 30 minutes in their first bilateral meeting. This year, Malaysia and New Zealand celebrated the 60th anniversary of their diplomatic relationship. Malaysia's major exports to New Zealand include crude petroleum as well as electrical and electronic products. Last year, total trade with New Zealand contracted 16.1% to 5.90 billion ringgit from 7.03 billion ringgit in 2015. However, from January to August this year, trade increased 49.3% to 5.25 billion ringgit from 3.518 billion ringgit in the corresponding period last year. A court in Myanmar sentenced two foreign journalists to two months in prison today for illegally flying a drone over parliament. Lang Hon Ming, a Singaporean, and Mok Choi Lin, a Malaysian, were on assignment for Turkish radio and television when they were detained on October 27th in the capital, Napatau. 
Their local interpreter, Ang Nang Su, and their driver, La Tin, were also sentenced to two months in jail for the incident. All four face separate charges for allegedly importing the drone. Another hearing is set for November 16th. Authorities allege the journalists tried to fly a drone over Parliament without permission. A lawyer for the interpreter and the driver said they should have been freed because they did not own or operate the drone. The state-run newspaper had previously reported the journalists intended to take photos of parliament buildings and pagodas in Naputau when security guards spotted them. Twenty-five people have been detained after they tested positive for drugs during an integrated operation at Gunung Semangol Rest and Service Area along the North-South Expressway. Korean District Police Chief Superintendent Omar Bakhtiar Yaakob said among those detained in yesterday's operation were five lorry drivers and four lorry attendants who tested positive for methamphetamine. The operation began at 10 p.m. and involved the police, road transport department, land public transport commission, environment department, plus Berhad, National Anti-Drugs Agency and Puspacom. Ini kerjasama ni kita sama-sama bagi kita boleh mengurangkan jumlah kemalangan jalan raya dan juga uh, terutamanya bagi kita mengurangkan uh, penyalahan dadah oleh uh, pemandu-pemandu terutamanya pemandu lori yang sentiasa untuk kerja lebih kurang menggunakan dadah. Lah. Nine foreigners were also detained for illegally entering the country and overstaying. A total of 190 vehicles were inspected and 286 traffic summonses were issued for various traffic offences during the two-hour operation. The Negeri Sembilan police have recorded statements of at least 80 individuals to facilitate investigation into the fire which destroyed the upper floor of the Serban wet market on September 9th. The Suramban Police Chief, ACP Thieu Hock Po, said the incident was believed to have been started deliberately. Based on a report by the State Fire and Rescue Department, the fire was believed to have been started by ignitable liquid residue which was poured in front of the Kedai Makanan Dan Minuman Senghing, located on the first floor of the building. Sasatan Pia Police adalah menjurus kepada semua aspek semua aspek hasil dari segi aspek penemuan dan juga aspek uh, siapa yang melakukan kejadian laku Police are currently looking at CCTV recordings of several premises near the scene of the incident Members of the public with any information on the incident are requested to come forward to help in the investigation process About 90% of the market's upper floor was destroyed affecting about 197 traders No deaths were however reported A soldier and a housewife were hauled before the Kwantan Sessions Court today to be charged with chaining a 10-year-old boy to a gas cylinder last month. Songko wearing Muhammad Farid Muhammad and a four-month pregnant Fatima Muhammad Zain were calm when they claimed trial to the two charges. The case gained national attention after images of the chained child lying on the floor went viral on social media. According to the first charge, 32-year-old Farid and Fatima, 37, are alleged to have abused the boy by chaining his neck to the gas cylinder, which caused injury. On the second count, the married couple were accused of leaving the child by himself without having made arrangement for his care. Farid and Fatima, who are stepfather and biological mother to the victim, respectively are purported to have committed the offences at a house at Block 31, Number 9, Lorong Indra Mahkota 1-13. The couple are alleged to have abused the boy between 1am and 9.15am on October 5th. The duo purportedly left the child by himself between 8am and 10pm on September 31st. Judge Dato Unaiza Muhammad granted 6,000 ringgit bail with one surety for each of the accused and set January 9th next year for mention. In an effort to render further assistance towards the victims affected by the floods in Pulau Pinang, Kedah and Perak, 
Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi today launched a convoy carrying essential items and supplies under the People's Volunteer Corps' RELA 2.08 mission. The mission involving the participation of 500 RELA officers and members will see them travel on board 19 lorries, 17 vans and 7 four-wheel drive vehicles and MPVs to the affected states from today. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said it was time to translate the federal government's commitment to assist the flood victims based on grounds of humanity, irrespective of which political party led the state. However, he reiterated the fact that the cause of the floods was due to overdevelopment and advised parties involved to re-evaluate development plans in the future. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid also released a convoy from the Rimau Akar Putrajaya 4x4 Disaster Relief Club consisting of four 40 club members with 15 four-wheel drive vehicles carrying cleaning equipment and basic necessities to assist flood victims in Penang and Kedah. For the mission, Rela received various donations such as basic food items, cleaning tools and woodcutters amounting to almost 90,000 ringgit to assist in the cleaning up process. Bank Ragyat has contributed 100,000 ringgit in kind to assist hospitals and clinics in Pulau Pinang that have been affected by floods which hit the state on Saturday. According to Bank Ragyat Marketing and Communication Senior Vice President Nizam Sani, the aid are in the form of refrigerators, wheelchairs and air conditioners based on the needs of each hospitals and clinics. beri saluran bantuan kepada hospital-hospital di Pulau Pinang yang, yang baru ini ya, terlibat dengan banjir. Uh, so kita dah kenal pasti enam hospital dan klinik kesihatan mana kita dah ada kontak dan kita bagi uh, bantuan daripada apa yang diperlukan. Among the hospitals and health centres that received assistance were Pulau Pinang Hospital, Mak Mandin Health Clinic, Lahar Yoi Rural Clinic and Sungai Dua Health Clinic. The aid was handed over to Pulau Pinang Hospital Director Datuk Dr. Norsida Ismail. Bank Rakyat has also sent 30 volunteers to help the cleaning works at the clinics and hospitals. PHP denies money laundering allegation. Details coming right up. Tabung Haji Properties in Renberhat, THP, has denied allegations that it had a role in laundering money owned by Prince Al Walid bin Talal. The allegation was made earlier in March this year in a report by Australia Financial Review AFR that Crestmount Capital, a West Asian fund run by Prince Khalid, son of Prince Al Walid bin Talal, had closed a 100 million Australian dollar investment into Piety Investments, a Sydney residential developer. THP said although it had several investments with the Piety Group in developing pr residential projects in Sydney, all the investments were made directly by THP from internal funds. THP also said it had obtained all required regulatory approvals in Malaysia and Australia for its projects in Sydney. It added that the allegation that TH and its subsidiary were involved in money laundering is false and baseless and reserve all rights in the matter. The Works Ministry has reminded the public not to be misled by irresponsible parties using its name for the purpose of frauds con concerning fraudulent projects. In a statement, the ministry today said it received information from the public, contractors and construction industry players from within and outside the country on the matter. The ministry said the suspect used the WhatsApp application to contact victims and offer projects by placing several conditions for the purpose of assisting the victims to process or enable the fraudulent project to be acquired from the ministry or the public works department. Hence, the ministry urged the relevant parties to be cautious if they received offers of suspicious contracts and advised them to contact the Corporate Communications Unit at 032771 4613 
or 4623 or email pro at kkr.gov.my to get confirmation. It also reminded the relevant authorities not to conduct any financial transactions if they received such WhatsApp messages before getting verification from the ministry. There were only five snatch theft cases reported in the heart of the Trungganu state capital this year. Nevertheless, the authorities are not lowering their guard and are determined to keep Kuala Trungganu nearly crime-free, no matter how petty the violation. Trungganu Crime Prevention and Community Safety Chief ACP Rizwan Abdul Hamid says keeping the city safe is vital to ensure that tourism, which is a tremendous revenue earner for the state, is not adversely affected. The five snatch thefts occurred in and around Kampong China in Jalan Bandar, which is a tourism hub for visitors and locals. There are numerous shopping centers, eateries and entertainment outlets in the area, which draw a large number of tourists for festivals, tours and those on transit to the idyllic islands of Terengganu. As such, a crime-free environment will give greater confidence to the people, thus encouraging and boosting tourism. ACP Rizwan added that police are also conducting patrols on foot and motor vehicles of other tourist spots in and near the city, such as beaches, esplanades and shopping malls, in view of the visit beautiful Trungganu year 2017, which is targeting 5.5 million tourists. In a separate development, the Royal Malaysian Police PDRM will recruit in stages about 6,000 new officers and personnel beginning January 2018 to fill various existing posts and vacancies left by officers who had retired or quit. Bukit Aman Deputy Director of Management Training, Datuk T. Narina Sagarin, said the positions that needed to be filled included inspectors, low-ranking officers, orang asli police constables and police cadets. The recruitment is aimed at enhancing police capacity and capability to effectively carry out policy matters nationwide and to provide better service for the people. Defender Fadli Shahs will take the captain armband for tonight's Asian Cup qualifier against North Korea at iMobile Stadium in Burmam, Thailand in place of Safik Rahim, who is serving a one-match suspension. National team head coach Nelo Vingada, who made the announcement, said as the most senior national capped player, Fadli was the right person to lead Harimau Malaya's players for the 9pm match. Besides tonight's match, Malaysia and North Korea will also face each other next Monday in their second qualifier match at the same stadium. Suffolk, who received a red card during the last match against Hong Kong, will return to his captain's role on Monday. Malaysia cannot afford to lose with their chances of qualifying for the Asian Cup already on live support. Lebanon sit top of Group B on 10 points and are on the USP on clinching a spot at the 2019 Asian Cup. Malaysia bottom on one point with three matches remaining including a final fixture with Lebanon while North Korea are third on two and Hong Kong second with five. Meanwhile, North Korea coach John Anderson said he has studied Malaysia's strengths and weaknesses. The Norway-born Anderson said they want to show their true colors against Malaysia following the 5-0 thrashing by Lebanon last month. Much like Malaysia, North Korea have played a match less than Lebanon and Hong Kong and are searching for their first win of the campaign to revive their qualification hopes. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, TPP talks reach critical point at APEC Summit. We'll be back with more updates at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Renee Loretta Fong. Have a pleasant evening.